Welcome back, everybody, to the Kansas City Royals franchise here at MLB The Show 21. We are kicking today's episode off with a trade, and we are going to go acquire Tyler Naquin, or at least we're going to try to. He can play all three outfield spots, see potential, 73 overall player. So it's not like it's going to ask a whole lot of us to go get a guy like Tyler Naquin. And really, I'm looking at this type of trade, I really want to get rid of some players that I don't think have a future for us, but maybe the Reds think that they do have a future for them. So we're going to go off and we're going to trade Freddie Fermin and Michael Massey, two players that I didn't see a whole big future for us in our system. So we're going to go out and go get Tyler Naquin. He's hitting 250 right now. And really the reason why I wanted Tyler Naquin is because he's got some pretty good hitting numbers. He's really good defensively. In fact, he's better defensively than Andrew Benintendi. Overall, I think it's a pretty good trade for us. He's very good defensively. That's going to play anywhere you put him, left field, right field, center field. The speed is kind of a concern there, 40-some-odd speed. But offensively, he's got some good numbers there as well. So I'm excited about Tyler Naquin on this team. Nothing major, not a big trade, but it's just a little tit-for-tat type of trade that uh, we'll see what fits. All right, let's move out to gameplay here against the Chicago White Sox, the worst team in the American League right now, believe it or not. Yeah, they got 10 wins on the season. They're just not playing well. And Lucas Giolito's performance might be a big reason why. 5.82 ERA, 1.5 whip. We got to be able to jump on this guy. Ben Benintendi just misses on this pitch. And, you know, the thing with Giolito is, is if he gets into a groove with that curveball, which it seems like he is already... We're swinging and missing all over the place. Once he gets that going, it could be a long night. But Whit Merrifield is going to strike out here, but reach on an error. 1-1 one, one count. we got a little hit and run going, and Salvi can't make contact. Whit Merrifield is going to be tossed out by Grandal. Good throw all the way down to second. Good tag, and we're out of the inning. Let's go to the top of the second. We got Luis Roberts up, and Danny Duffy hangs with it. Makes the throw to first, but the ump calls him safe. We think he's out. Mike Matheny says, no, guys, hold on a second. You better get that call right. So they're going to go to the booth. They're going to check it out. And we got the call right. We did, not the umps. Umps are 0 for 1 tonight. So get the correct call on the field. Robert is tossed out. Mankata comes up. 0-0 count. With two down and Mondesi on the backhand. And then across the body throw. What a throw. Mondesi with the web gem esque type of play. I really love Mondesi at shortstop. I really don't see myself addressing shortstop unless it's for a better hitter down the line, unless Mondesi can really take it to the next level in that part of his game. But it's really just nice to know. It's a good feeling to know that your shortstop is locked down. There's an absolute gem out there in the shortstop position. So, Hunter Dozier going to give Tim Anderson an opportunity there with a ground ball. Uh, Giolito has still got that curveball working for him. And here's Whit Merrifield with an opportunity himself, but can't get the ball out of the glove. It just must have got stuck in the webbing or something, man. Can't get the ball out. And then we've got a pickoff attempt. We had Adam Ingle thrown out. But instead, Danny Duffy's pickoff attempt is a little high for Santana. And he can't get his momentum moving back towards second base. And Mike Matheny is pissed off. I would be upset too. And in fact, I am upset because these back-to-back -back mental gaffes are going to lead to a run for the White Sox. Very, very frustrating situation. We got to get an out here. Absolutely have to have an out right now. We got to stop the bleeding. Duffy. Ground ball. Santana makes the play. Thank God. We're out of it. Ugh, it's very frustrating, guys, but you know what? That's baseball for you. That's baseball for you. Tyler Naquin going to come on up, try to get his debut with you guys to be a positive one, but he's going to strike out here. And Michael Taylor going to ground out here to go on Makata. Makes a nice throw. Got it on the backhand. And you know what? We're just missing. Like, look at where these PCIs are located. We're just missing against Giolito. Hopefully... We figure it out because it's starting to get a little dicey now. One down, 2-2 two -two count, Mankata. Strike three. High and inside fastball. Mankata does not like the call, but it looked like it was a strike to us. Danny Duffy clutching up here. 3-2 count against Grandal. Slider outside and low. He's got Grandal and Mankata sitting there just watching it go by for strike three. Gotta love it. That's going to give us an opening here. 
two down. Merrifield comes up and gets a perfect, perfect. I was thinking that that ball was going to go. I thought it was going to have some legs and get out, but it's a double, so we'll take it. Two, two count, and Salvi. Ah, twos were wild, man. He had two, two count with runner on second. With two down, we can't get it done. Tim Anderson, though, in the top of the fifth. Throw from right field, coming on in. Adam Engel scores. Tim Anderson comes through yet again. So it's been Anderson and Engel have been in the thorn in our sides for the Royals, leading to a 2 0 lead here in the mid part of the game. So Tim Anderson trying to steal, and Salvi, being the gold glove caliber catcher that he is, nabs him. 3 2 count. Line drive back to Merrifield makes the insane play there. So good play by Merrifield. But Tim Anderson, as we mentioned, has been the Royals' killer in this game so far. We need to get something going here. Shift. It was on for Carlos Santana. He pounds it right through it. And we get, again, another two-out hit. That's been the name of the game here. Two-out hits for the Royals. We can't get anything started earlier in these at-bats. It's very frustrating. Tyler Naquin shooting for that left field line. Can't hit it. And he can't hit the fastball. Naquin strikes out, and the Royals have to go into the top of the sixth inning. With Danny Duffy still out there, he's still pitching a gem. He's going to strike out Mankata, and look at where we're missing again, guys. The PCI. We just can't figure out Giolito. Benintendi flies out to right field. We are going to relieve Danny Duffy here with Jesse Hahn. And here's a little looper. Right in front of Tyler Naquin. Grandal is going to be safe. I was really trying to bait him to go to second. Naquin's got that really strong arm in left field, but he doesn't go anyway. Next batter. Going to strike out. That's Danny Mendick. Got to love it. So Jesse Hahn gets a strikeout. He gets another out here. We got two down with a 1-1 count. And this is going to fall in right in front of center fielder Michael Taylor. Solaire. And Whit Merrifield, so nobody could get to it. Next batter, Leroy Garcia is going to go to the opposite field. And Tyler Naquin going to try to run it down. He does. Got to get the throw in. We got a zero speed runner. Not going to be in time. That's going to be another RBI for the White Sox. It's now 3 to nothing. 3 2 count here. Jesse Hahn in that curveball that he's known so well for. It's going to strike out Jose Abreu. Two outs again. Bottom of the seventh. Jorge Soler comes up and hits a double. Again, guys, how many hits do we have with two outs? It's so frustrating right now. It's just been a very, very frustrating game here against these really bad White Sox. They've got ten wins. They're so bad. They're the worst team in the American League, and we're losing to them. Bottom of the ninth. 0-2 count. Liam Hendricks coming in. Flies out. Again, we just missed. When Mondesi's hitting home runs, potential home runs, that's frustrating, man. Ben and Teddy's going to strike out. When Merrifield's going to strike out on a check swing. And Chicago gets a W on the road. Congrats to Tony La Russa. Notch another win in his, his historic career. But look at the box score, guys. 11 hits for the White Sox. Three hits for us. For like, we just we didn't do anything. We did nothing no offensively. Very frustrating game all the way around, but it does prove to you guys that I can lose, okay? It does prove to you guys I can lose. This isn't just going to be a user-dominated series. <laughs> At least, not yet. Kidding. Well, we'll, we'll see what players require. We'll figure that out in the end. But Danny Duffy pitched well, man. Nine strikeouts, a couple hits across, only two earned runs, one walk. What, what else is there to say? He pitched really well. And meanwhile, the Royals, even though in simulation, they're still playing pretty well. We're like in third place right now. We're actually going to play against the Minnesota Twins because this seems like that's going to be a big-time matchup for the AL Central. We win our series against Tampa Bay, and I'll give you guys a standings update. There you see it up on the screen. We are third. We're three games back, and we're right behind the Twinkies. So if we can win this series against the Twins, that's going to be huge for the morale. It's going to be big for... Our push here in June. We're at the end of May. So if you can make a big push in June, that's really going to do wonders for your team. Then you got the whole month of July. You can really reassess where your team's at. You can probably make some moves to get better. You can make moves to get to push. 
I think it's a it's a big month for us. This is a big game, especially against these Twins for us here coming up. We're four games back in the wild card, guys, right behind the Red Sox and the Blue Jays. Two AL East teams that I believe are going to be beating up on each other in that AL East. So it's our job to take care of our AL Central opponents. And against Kenta Maeda, a guy that throws a lot of off-speed pitches, I think we can hit him. I think we can do a good job against him. He throws a lot of sliders, a lot of split fingers, a lot of change-ups. So we can totally rule out the fastball. We're not facing off against a guy that's going to hit 95, 96. So we really are just hanging back and waiting for him to come to us. So, so far, we're putting a lot of good swings on it. Ben Benintendi going to line out to the left field. But look at Whit Merrifield here with two outs again. Another two-out double here for Whit Merrifield. What he's been doing with two outs is nothing short of crazy. I just wish that our top of the order, our top two hitters, would get on for him. We would have more RBIs. Salvador Perez is going to hit this slider all the way off that little overhang on the wall. In the stands, could have been a home run. It would have just been a little bit higher. Would have been a two-run shot. I really would have liked that. But Salvi hitting about 180 right now is not going to be, you know, beggars can't be choosers is what I'm really saying here. So Salvi's got to feel good about that one. Just to give us the lead, one nothing to be able to jump on an opposing starter the way that we're doing right there in the first inning. What we weren't able to do against Lucas Giolito, that's got to feel good. Brad Keller out on the mound here against Byron Buxton and nice play by Mondesi. Brad Keller's actually been pitching really well. He's 5-2. and two. He's got a 2-plus ERA. He's been pitching really well. I haven't had a chance to pitch with him, and that's showing up here in gameplay. <laughs> Arias is going to get hit, and then we got to face off against Nelson Cruz, one of the guys that have just been a nemesis for me in MLB The Show. But we do get him to strike out here, so that's feeling good. I'm feeling good with Brad Keller, so I try to get a little cocky here with Josh Donaldson, and he's going to make me pay for it. Two-run shot for Josh Donaldson, and man, did that thing get out in a hurry. So, guys, keep in mind that once we hit the playoffs, if we ever do hit the playoffs, there's no guarantee that that's ever going to happen. I, I am going to be live streaming those games, so I do want to get a feel for our pitching staff and especially even our hitters, too. I want to be getting a feel over and over and over and over again with these guys so that I, once I get in gameplay, I know what I'm doing with them. You know what I mean? So Salvador Perez is going to hit a line drive. Almost took Kenta Maeda's head off. But Soler is going to ground out to Josh Donaldson. That's a double play. And we got two down here in the top of the fourth inning. Hunter Dozier is going to restart the offense here with a single. With two down. Carlos Santana, big spot. And again, the PCI. Just look how close we are to doing damage. Can't get it squared up. And we're going to pop it up in the infield. Next inning, Josh Donaldson. Remember, he hit that two-run homer. I get him back. I get a little revenge here and strike him out. Brad Keller against Miguel Sano is going to get him to ground out, and that's going to be the end of the fourth inning. It's still a 2-1 game. 1-1 one, one count here for Tyler Naquin. Is this one going to go out? No, it's off the wall, but he is going to roll in with a double. That feels really good to see Tyler Naquin actually have some success. I was really pushing hard in his debut against the White Sox for you guys. I really want to make that trade have some success behind it. I really want to see him do something. But Mondesi's going to move him over to third. We got two down here for Benintendi against Maeda, and he's going to strike out. And here comes the throw to first. That's an easy throw. No! He throws it away, but Nelson Cruz is there to corral it, and Naquin, oh, he was trying to go home to tie the game, and Maeda escapes. So it's still 2-1. to one. And take a look here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Salvi with a runner on base. And he's going to fire him out there at second yet again. So great job. Great throw there behind the dish. And we got two down here. A little ground ball to Santana. Makes the play. We're out of the fifth inning. So again, we're hitting Maeda. We are, we're finding ways to hit against him. Get runners on base. But we got to do some more damage. And it looks like what Merrifield is going to do just that. Yes. Solo shot for Whit Merrifield, his fourth on the season, going for 390. And that had some velo on it, baby. That was that was out in a hurry. Merrifield gonna tie this baby up. Put all those frustrations into the baseball. Got a lot of two out doubles, got a lot of doubles in the last few games here. So that felt good to just get a home run with him. Here is Jorge Soler trying to do the very same thing, but take a look at Byron Buxton. Wow, what a play at the warning track. 
We got to get the stat track, the show track on this thing. Look at how far he's going, man. That's got to be like 99-something. 99.1 efficiency, 102 distance covered. Insane defensive play here, but we got a little bit of a mini jam here. 2-1 count, a runner on. Nelson Cruz is going to hit this thing long, far. It's at the wall. Naquin's giving chase. He's got to time it up. He made the catch. Tyler Naquin makes the catch at the wall and steals a two-run homer away from Nelson Cruz. Oh, baby, that fires me up. That's exactly why we got you in a trade, baby. Tyler Naquin, what a play. At the wall, would have been a two-run shot. And then Donaldson comes up and strikes out looking. That has got to fire up the KC bench and the fan base. Woo! Tyler Naquin here, 2-2 two -two count. Top of the seventh. He's going to send a long fly ball to right. But that's also not going to get out. Man, he has been... Having himself a game here so far tonight in Minnesota. Unfortunately, it just didn't have enough carry to it to get out. That would have been really the icing on the cake there for him. 0-2 count here, bottom seventh. And we got Naquin in left field giving chase again. Makes the play. Man, Tyler Naquin, have yourself a web gem night. Look at this play. Giving it all the effort in the world. Makes the play, gets the stumble a little bit. Man, oh man, Tyler Naquin's having himself a night. Here's a ground ball right past first base. We had a little bit of a weird defensive uh, coverage there. Talking football almost. We had a weird defensive alignment there in our infield. But either way, that's going to be a base knock. And here is a little fly ball to center fielder, Michael Taylor. He's going to come up throwing. Are we going to get it out here? Whoa, that was close. That was really close. He gives him a little bit of a look there. I like that. Keller still pitching well. Ground ball here to Merrifield. That's a clutch situation there. We had a runner on second. Gets the ground ball. Merrifield makes the play. Kalame is going to relieve Kenta Maeda here in the top of the eighth inning. And he's going to get an early strikeout here on Mondesi. Two down here against Merrifield. 0-2 count. And Merrifield's going to hit a ball hard again. But this one's right at Buxton. And it's going to end our eighth inning push. Greg Holland is going to check in against Mitch Garver in a little slider. Going to swing and a miss. That's a good pitch by Greg Holland, the veteran. Taking a look at Brad Keller's numbers. He only had four strikeouts, no walks, two earned, and seven strong innings. you got to love that output there. Buxton looks like this could be a double here, but Naquin is third time a charm. It is. He gunned Byron Buxton out. 99 speed Byron Buxton, and he says, no, 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 no. Look at this. One hop, one crow hop, right on the money. Merrifield with a tag. That is an insanely great defensive play. Dude, Tyler Naquin has been the MVP of this game. He has to be the MVP of this game. I really hope that he hits a go-ahead homer or something for us because we really need it. We need a breakthrough against these Twinkies. Taylor Rogers checks in here for Kalame. And Hunter Dozier comes up with two down here in the top of the ninth. He's going to send a long fly ball to center field. Jump for it, Buxton. Ah, oh, I wish I was waiting for that animation. I was like, dude, if he jumps for this, that's gone. It's got to be gone. Ugh, oh, but just a little bit short. We're going Holland against Nelson Cruz, and he gets a single. A hard hit single nonetheless. So, Max Kepler with some speed is going to replace Nelson Cruz to be the pinch runner with nobody down. Josh Donaldson comes up against Stalmont. Nice curveball there. It's going to be a one and two count. This is a big spot here. You got to get Donaldson out. And we do. We challenge him with two straight curveballs. He swings and misses at both. Stalmont needs a big out here. We get a double play ball, possibly. Dozier to Merrifield, back to first. Got the double play. We're going to extras. That is the defensive play that we absolutely needed. Now Tyler Naquin coming up here trying to capitalize on the heck of a night that he's had. But he's going to fly out to center fielder Byron Buxton. Here's a ground ball back up the middle. And, oh, look at the play by Simmons, but not in time. Michael Taylor is going to get to first base with his speed. But that's a heck of a play by Simmons. You wonder if he would have just gotten there a little bit sooner. Next batter up. It looks like we're going to do some damage. But no dice. No dice. Max Kepler makes a nice play in right field. And we are going to the bottom of the 10th. 
Bottom of the 10th inning. Josh Stelmont still out there against Miguel Sano. This is a big batter to get. First pitch. Swing and a miss. Nice challenge there, but look where the PCI was. It was right on the baseball. You got to be careful with Sano here. We're going full effort here, but no, the curveball. The curveball just caught too much of the plate, and Miguel Sano is going to walk it off for the Twins. Oh, man. That's frustrating. Two losses in this episode, guys. That rarely ever happens, I'll tell you that right now. But at least it shows that I'm human, right? That I'm not going to win every single game in this series. That there's a little adversity to be had here. But look at this pitch. Josh Stalma just grooved it, man. Right down the middle, that curveball just didn't break enough. And that is going to be another loss for the Royals. So that was an unfortunate loss. Hopefully we can at least win the series, the last two games in simulation. That would be a good way to at least get plus one on these twins and try to move and push towards second place in the American League Central. But man, what a game by Tyler Naquin though. Offensively, he was solid. Defensively, he was stellar. But I think for us, the offense, it's, it's the offense right now. The pitching's been good. Whether in gameplay or in simulation, the pitching has been solid. The pitching's been good. It's just timely hitting. And I think if we think about trade deadline, I know we just got Tyler Naquin here in this episode, but if we think about trade deadline in July, we've got to consider a bat. We've got to consider at least trying to find somebody, whether that's through our minor league system or whether that's seeking outside help. We need to acquire another bat to help us really push um, for playoff contention because we're going to need it. We're going to need some extra offense in this lineup. So we end up losing the series, guys, against Minnesota. We got one win on the very last day of May. And right now we're at the draft. We are at the draft spot in the month of June. It's always on the second. It's on the second, third, or fourth, I think. But I think in this series, at least in this year, I think it is on the second. So either way, guys, in the next episode, we will be showing the draft. I will be showing you guys what CPU-generated players were drafted by each team as well as the Royals. Now keep in mind, as you guys are taking a look at the standings here, your prospects that you did the open submission form and if you were a patron prospect, those players aren't gonna be in this in this draft. You won't see them being drafted. You will have to wait till the off season so then we can rename them. So just, I want you guys to be very clear on that. I'll explain more in the next episode. Until then, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you like this thing. I'll see you in the next one. As always, peace.